So I'm going to try to give you an overview. It's I'm probably going to just make one big video, but an overview that relates exponential functions with the logarithmic functions because they are inverse functions of each other. So when we're working with them, they undo each other. So recall from previous video that the natural log of e is equal to 1 because e to the x or e to the 7, whatever, is is base e. When I take the natural log of it, it undoes it, so it goes to 1. And so if I have e to the 7 and I take the natural log of e to the 7, so think about the property 7 can be written as the coefficient and then natural log of e is 1, you can also say that they undo each other and you're just left with the 7. So e to the 7, natural log of e to the 7, the exponent 7 is what gets left if you, un, if you use the logarithmic function as the inverse of a exponential function. But right now that what's graphed is y equals x and that's because any inverse function is a reflection of the other function's graph across this line. So if I have the graph of an exponential function, so f of x equals a to the x, so if I turn that one on, this is exponential decay. And if you recall from a previous video, I can change this such that it's exponential growth. So again, as a quick review, exponential functions have uh, domains of all real numbers. It means I go as far to the left as possible to the negative numbers and far to the right as possible in the positive. Even though this will take a, this will go way, way up before it goes, as it goes over more slowly. And so once I change it to decay, you can see I go much more easily. You can see I can go to positive x. And this goes very, very quickly up positive y as it goes more slowly over to negative x um, in the decay, in decay. So here is an exponential growth. It has a base of 3, so it's tripling every x. So when I started out with x equals 0, right, x equals 0, I put in x equals 0, 3 to the 0 is 1, so I get 0, 1. All exponential functions, unless you have an initial value that is not 1, or if I transform it, add 1 or subtract 1 to x, or add 1 or subtract 1 to the whole function, or to y, depending on how you view it, every single exponential function will go through this point otherwise. So if I don't do a transformation, they go through this point. And then at x equals 1, so I put 3 to the 1, I get 3. So here's the point, x equals 1, and I get 1 comma 3. So after one movement to the right on the x-axis, I triple this number. So it was 1, y equals 1, and now I have y equals 3. If I put it on the screen, I'm not going to. When I move from 1 to 2, I've now moved an additional value of x by one unit, this 3, the previous number, will be tripled. So this is 2 comma 9 way up there. Now, the inverse function to this, like I said, is a reflection about this line. So imagine this is the mirror, and I have this curve. When I reflect it, it's going to look like this. Okay? In fact, it'll look like that. And there's its reflection. Okay? That's the logarithmic function. So that's log base 3. Log base 3 of x equals y. So log base 3 of x. Now, notice I have this a, and this a is the same. So if I change the base, both of these functions are going to move, and they'll, they'll remain reflections of each other. Okay? And if I squeeze it this way, they'll be closer and closer and closer. Okay? Now, if I change it to exponential decay, it'll still remain the inverse. So this is my original function, the exponential function. It reflects to be this one. At this point, they're on y equals x. And then over here, my original function reflects over here. So now this is exponential growth still, and my logarithm looks like this. Now if I go to exponential decay, pow, right there. Now my original function looks like exponential decay, and this logarithm function looks like this. Okay. Now, as I change over, I guess maybe I didn't want to change this to the dotted line blue. I'll just leave it as green as I had. Okay. So um, the green function is the logarithm function. The blue one is not. Now, most commonly, we view the logarithmic function this way. It is not wrong the other way. It's just more we see this more often because we're dealing with exponential growth potentially more often. I don't know if that's actually the case. 
Um, notice how when we the exponential functions went through 0, 1, because when I have an inverse function, we switch x and y, right? x has become y's and y's become x. So the logarithmic function, if we don't transform it, goes to the point 1, 0. Now, knowing that it goes through 1, 0, let's look at some other things. What's the range of this function? Well, remember, the domain for my exponential function was all the x values, all real numbers. So that becomes my range for my logarithmic functions. So, right, these x's become these y's, these negative y's. These x's, positive x's, become positive y's. So here are all the y values covered. This goes forever in the negative direction. And this, though it goes slowly, goes forever in the positive y direction. Uh, and the range of my exponential function was all of the positive y values and does not include 0. Now that becomes all of the positive x values and does not include 0 as the domain of my logarithmic function. So in other words, I cannot take the, dom I cannot take the logarithm of 0. I cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. It's gonna, your calculator will give you domain error. Like punch in your calculator right now, logarithm of negative 2 it will tell you error domain, okay? Assuming you have a TI. So this is what I wanted to show you here. And this is why they, they're inverse functions or this is the nature of inverse functions. There, I couldn't find a new blank graph. All right, so we'll just do that. Um, okay, so Let's just type in a function, f of x equals, equals log a, a of x, sorry. And there's our logarithmic function, okay? That goes with exponential, an exponential growth function. So, um, I don't know what I want to, what I want to throw in here. Uh, I want to do some transformation. So let's put minus h in here. That works the same way, but I have to put parentheses around it. And we're going to make the slider h. And we're going to put a plus k in here, though that's not used very often. Um, we can do that. Okay, so right now let's set h to 0, and so, and k to 0. So I have no transformations on. I have 0 transformations. If I put a multiplier out here, notice how it still goes through zero, uh, 1, comma 0, but it gets, it grows in curves, right? So it, it goes up more aggressively because I'm doubling all my numbers. Let's compare that with um, f of x. Let's copy all this and take away the 2. OK, so this number would have been this, but if I double it, it's here. If I have this 4 at x equals 4, I get approximately 3.1 or 3.2. But now I get 6.4 or 6.3 you know, two, whatever it was. So this is double the height. Okay, and at zero, I, when I double zero, I get zero. When I'm here, I have negative 1.5, but when I double it, I get negative three. Okay, so this is just doubled. Why is it doubled? Because I'm multiplying it times two. Am I making sense? Okay, so we can get rid of that and get rid of this two. The multiplier just shifts, just, just stretches it um, vertically. In this case, if I multiply it in here, it's going to stretch it horizontally, but we're not going to mess around with that. This transformation here, this h, this x minus h, if we remember our discussion in class, h minus h, a positive h value is going to shift it to the right. So now watch this point right here. If I make this h a 2, this will shift to the right two units. 1, 2. It's going to end up right there. How do I know that? Because remember, my base function is log a f of x equals log a, the quantity x minus h, the quantity closed plus k. This h, if it's positive, will shift to the right two units. So if I make this positive 2, it's going to shift to the right two units. And it's going to read log, a, log base a of x minus 2. So make this, my, this positive 2, and it just shifted to the right two units. 
and it's if I put this H in right where this H is, it's going to be X minus 2. Okay? If I want to shift it to the left, let's say 2 units, it's going to be, end up being at uh, this, I call it an anchor point. The anchor point's going to end up being at negative 1, 0. If I make H equal to negative, uh, yeah, equal to negative 2. So if I make that negative 2, it goes through right, this, through, right through this point, negative 1, 0. But my function will read well, f of x equals log a x plus 2, because that's x minus a negative 2 for h. So I'll prove it to you by typing in y equals log base a of quantity x plus 2. And there it is, sitting right on top of it. The green one right on top of the red one. Okay? There's the red one. There's the green one. Red, green. All right? So k shifts it upward, as we should easily understand or recall from parabola work in, um, in Algebra 2 in high school. So if I, shift, if I make this a 7, it's going to shift up 7 units, and it's going to look like it's rolling upwards, like unrolling a toilet paper. So there it is. It doesn't look like it's kind of rolling and painting on the y-axis. So there it's rolling up the y-axis. Okay. I make it seven, and I'll almost be off the screen, and just look at vertical, almost a vertical line here, close to, if not on the y-axis, and then it starts peeling away up there. It's going to go through what? Instead of one comma zero, it's going to go through one comma. I'm um, sorry, one comma seven, and there it is at one comma seven, right? Because if I add seven units to the y value, zero plus seven is seven, so zero comma seven. Um, what else can I show you here? So those, those are the basic transformations. So now if I change the base, watch what happens. Uh, let's take away this transformation by making k equal to 0. And we saw the basis changes when I talked about exponential functions, that unrolling. But we're going to see that here as well. Okay, so notice if I have my exponential function here, as I increase a, it's going to it's going to lower and get closer to the x-axis. As so I increase the base, it's getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. So in other words, as my base goes towards 10. Now where is e? E is around 2.7 something or other, around there. And log base 10 is even squished down or closer to the x-axis than this. This is this is a this is my base log base six. Okay, I guess maybe I should just change this to 10 and get there like this. And so there's log base 10. Log base e would look like this. Would look like that. So the green is log base e or natural log and red is log base 10, or just logarithm, the common logarithm, okay? And again, if I have uh, a base less than, a base that's less than one, I have the inverse of exponential decay, so my logarithm kind of flips over to, to a certain extent. Like that. And as I get closer to zero, it gets closer to the x-axis, okay? And so now let's do some example problems. I'll try to stick to what's uh, relevant to what we, uh, what I'm going to ask you to do. Okay. So um, first here, matching graphs and functions. Match each each function with the appropriate graph. So there's a difficult way and an easy way to talk about this and do this, but I look for the anchor points. If I put one in for x, one times three is three. The logarithm of base logarithm base ten of three is what? So go ahead and go to your calculator. And put in log 3. I get some kind of 0.477. So which one is at 1 comma 477? Well, it's not this one. This one goes through 1 comma 0. It's not that one. This one's at 1, 1 comma 3 maybe. And this one's at 3, 1. It's not even at 1. So this one is this horizontal stretch at um, this first graph, so A goes with A. B 
y equals 3 plus. So remember, this 3, they put 3 plus, but that's the same as adding 3 at the end. That should click with what we just did on, this, on Des, in Desmos, that this is a vertical shift of 3 units. So my anchor point normally is at 1 comma 0. So this is a shift up 3 units. So that's B. So B goes with C. And then this is x cubed, but remember, I can rewrite this as 3 logarithm x, right? I can rewrite it as 3 times log x. Log x is my kind of parent function, and then I'm multiplying it by 3. So that's a stretch in the vertical of 3. That's this one. It still goes through 0, 1. This one doesn't. It's shifted to the right. This one doesn't because of the horizontal stretching. And then 3 times this. Three times, these two are the same. This three logarithm and this one, these two are the same. So they're both this one here, okay? This one is a horizontal shift, and there is no x minus or x plus horizontal shifting. D doesn't have a, pa a match, okay? So graph A, so A is graph A, just as we said. Graph C, I'm sorry, graph B, this part B, this, excuse me, equation B is graph C, just as I said. And C and D are both graph B, just as I said, because these two are the same equation. Okay? Shifting a natural log function. Okay, so they're writing up here, they have the function y equals, oops, y equals natural log of x minus 2. Okay? So that's a shift what? shift of 2, is it to the right or to the left? I'm hoping you see that it's a shift to the right, two units. Why? Because h equals 2. Why is h equal to 2? Because my base transformation function is natural log of x minus h plus k. This is a horizontal shift, h equals 2. Okay. And so here are the comparisons between y equals natural log of x, which is this one that goes through the anchor point, and this shift doesn't go through the anchor point anymore, it's shifted to the right two units. Inverse functions logarithmic versus exponential. I already talked about this. Um, I guess we can, we should probably do a little math with it. So for instance, if I had an equation that was uh, 3 equals e to the x, and I want to use the fact that the natural log is the inverse function of that. I can say the natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of e to the x. And I can do one of two things. I can either write this x as a coefficient, like I had done, we had done in the past, right? x equals natural log of e. And then we go, well, what's the natural log of e? Well, it's 1. So I get x equals the natural log of 3, which is just some number. Or you can do the following. 3 equals e to the x. I can take the natural log of both sides, and you could think of this as just some number, because it is, and that natural log of e, since they're inverse functions, you can think of them as undoing each other, if you wish. I know you guys want to say cancel, and so that's how I can get to the x. Either way works, because it's all the same math, and math works. If math didn't work, planes would crash out of the sky. So, um, here we do a bunch of, they do a bunch of these examples. If you're getting stuck on any of the homework, you should go take a look at it, okay? These are, they call them rules. Um, you can write them down, of course, because it's a blue box, but the logarithm of 10 to the x is equal to x. Well, because remember, if I say log, ten, log is just log base 10, if I'm asking the question, what exponent must I raise on 10 for it to equal 10 to the x? Well, isn't the exponent x? Same thing here, and these are just reversed. So remember, these cancel, or you can think of these canceling. These cancel, if you wish, or you can think of those canceling, right? 